On today's show, Building Your Team with Key Employees, part three of this week's series on the top business succession blueprints with architect of Blueprints for Tomorrow, Nate Sachs. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Beckham Technician and Innsmark. Let's get down to business. Well, welcome to day three, Nate. Thank you. Uh, you know, you're really, you know, everybody expects this whole week to be about spy sell agreements, cross purchase, stock redemption, and all the math and to put some plans up on the board and do some math and numbers. That's the easy part. We're doing the very, and I think the tough trolling, we're really shepherding people through some of these basic concepts here today. And one of the big ones, especially today, is we're talking about building your team with key employees. And before I let you loose, I just read a couple articles last week on the new tactical issue of retention and recruiting. People are going after it using benefits to try to draw people in, but the bigger issue is the potential of either having a profit sharing on a key employee or maybe even him becoming a future in, uh, owner of the company. So when we're talking about key employees, I know that you believe this is a major issue in the way you look at su successful business su planning. So talk a little bit about who is a key employee in your mind. Key employee to me can be anybody from the receptionist up to the executive vice president. If that person's leaving, would cause you a financial loss. That's a key employee. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, I go one step higher, I talk about keep for lifers. Those two or three employees you wanna make sure you never lose. Mm -hmm. But two things as employers going against us right now. On almost every single survey I've seen recently, key employees, 75% of the time, perceive they've got a better place to go. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they're right, but they perceive mm -hmm. it. And second of all, with LinkedIn, as active as it is today, it's like having your resume out there 24 hours a day for the whole world to see without you lifting a finger. I have seen <clears throat> the headhunters trolling even our industry in this area. And I mean, we see them all the time. How can I sit as a business owner? I like this person. I want him to be a lifer, as you've just said. How, what can I do to make this person comfortable and not let him think that the grass is greener on the other side? You gotta kinda understand him. I broke this down to ages. Hmm. Let's start with the generation Y, 31 and under, okay? They wanna be perpetually connected. You gotta respect that. Technology is very important to them. Relationships are very important. They wanna work for a cause. They're tremendous at multitasking. They have parallel careers. Sometimes that's offensive to an owner. Well, they'll give you eight or 10 hours a day, but they're doing something for a couple hours a night. Maybe working in the technology world. Mm. They're maybe working on their new app they're gonna to sell to Facebook. They generally don't see themselves staying in any one job longer than two years. The relationship with the, their direct report is very important to them. They're very outspoken. Lifestyles are important to them. I've got a 25-year-old who just took a $15,000 pay cut. I mean, $15,000 of very significant dollars because the place he went to was a cooler place to work. He had foosball and pinball and a great big break room, and they had a softball team they played with once a week, and they all hung out together, and these guys are really cool. I wanted to be in that kind of environment. Hmm. So lifestyle is very important to them. They're also very influenced, believe it or not, unlike you and I, by what I call helicopter parents. What is that? Parents that are still hovering over them. I mean, I, I talked to uh, a parent over the weekend. <clears throat> he told me that his 32-year-old son spent an hour with him consulting him more than once on looking at it for a new job. Should I say this? Should I say that? When you and I were at that stage, we were not connected with our parents mm -hmm. at all. We were, we were on our own. Hmm. They work all sorts of hours of a day. They're not eight to fivers, because as long as they have that iPhone with them or, or, or their Android, they're connected, and they expect to be rewarded for their effort, not for their outcome. Hmm. They, that's a big difference. Now, come up here, Generation X, a little bit older. They move around career-wise. They're more concerned about work-life balance. They want time with their families. They want you as the employer to respect that. They're concerned about improving their skill set. They want to feel like they can grow. When I assess them for the business owner, ask questions you can't ask as the owner, I, I, but I can. Mm -hmm. What would cause you to leave here someday? If I didn't feel I was growing, I get that as the majority of the answer, most of the time. They do not believe that activity equals results, and they always want to improve their marketability. Then the guys our age, they're motivated by money. They want to know they're doing well. They need, they need feedback. They place a lot of importance on FaceTime. The employer should take them to lunch, meet the family, get to know them as people. They're very loyal. They want to have stellar careers, and they want to accumulate wealth. Pension, 401k, golden handcuffs. It's very important to this group. Well, now you've broken this down. I mean, I would think, I would think this would be, wow, if he wanted to stay in the job two years, maybe I don't want to interview a person like this. But you have to right now. I mean, mm -hmm. I've got somebody with me who's amazing. 
And she told me I wouldn't be here longer than two years. Well, now she's on her seventh or eighth year, and I'll, I think she'll be with me forever. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean, that, doesn't mean they can't be persuaded to stay. In their minds, they don't view any job as a mm -hmm. lifer. When you walk through this with some of your business owners, how do they respond when you break this demographic down? This is the hardest part, because they want the employee to think like them. Okay, look at this. I don't multitask. I don't have more than one career. I'm not on the phone all day long. Mm -hmm. I don't go back to my parents. Outcome is important. I don't get paid for effort. I get paid for results. So I've got to say it's a different mindset. Mm. And we're all becoming more and more either dependent upon Generation Y, or if we're not dependent upon Generation Y, our customers are. Mm. So we better understand these people. Well, when we come back from the break, we're going to continue this. These are really tough decisions and, and conversations that we're having about demographics and how they support an employer and a person who owns a business. We'll be right back. Back in the day, life insurance professionals were called field underwriters. Then, carriers trained their field force in the basics of life insurance underwriting. Today, the insurance industry doesn't educate the agent population as they once did. But now, you can have the informed risk guide at your fingertips so you can illustrate a reasonable rate class for your life insurance prospects. Just request your copy of the informed risk guide at downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. It's free from Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back to the second segment. Nate, uh, I love going through that demographics with you because I think sometimes we walk in there, we're just talking to this one guy, but key employees are now broken up into three different segments here, and we need to know how to address them. And we're teaching, you are, through your process, you're teaching employers how to talk to these people in their different segments. How to think like them. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about this. Motivating, I mean, I'm thinking like, hey, the guy has a job. That should be motivational enough. Old school, Steve. First of all, we throw a lot of money at the problem. Raises, bonuses, and that's not necessarily bad, but we've got to realize it takes more than that. Um, when I ask a room full of employees, what is it that you want most? What's the one word that, is, that comes up over and over again? Freedom, time? It starts with an R. I don't know. Respect. Really? I get things as simple as I want a business card with my title on it, a title of some kind. No, my family ever had a title. Can I have a private work area? Can I, be, can I get an, an award at, at, at the company banquet? Can I be recognized in the company newsletter? Things that we don't think are, are important and we're throwing bonuses and raises mm -hmm. and all along, that's not what they wanted. What do you think single working mothers want more than anything? I would say financial security. Nope. Flex time. Can I leave a little bit earlier? Can I go home a little, can I come in a little bit later if I need to? Can I take off Friday, take my child to the pediatrician? These are all things we've got to get into their psyche to figure out. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> nothing wrong with bonus plans. But let's focus for a couple minutes on the keep for lifers. People you really want to see stay till the end. You got to give them something a lot more important, and a lot more tangible than a 401k. 401k is qualified plans to have their place, but not as a gold handcuff. So first of all, it should be in specifically in writing. Tell me what it's going to take to get that bonus. It should be tied to results, not activity. I'm the employer. I'm not paying for activity. I'm paying for results. Potentially substantial, which means it could be anywhere from 25 to 30% of my income, my total comp. And most importantly, there's got to be deferral. If I leave, i got to lose this. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about plans that are not affected by ERISA, not affected by IRS, not affected by Department of, of Labor. Mm -hmm. Talking about phantom stock, stock appreciation rights, executive bonus plans, SERPs, the things that, that are out of the box where you can pick mm -hmm. and choose who's in, who's out in a very discriminatory fashion. Because these things we talk about are not important for the rank and file. So when I'm, you're approaching motivating employees, you're thinking in, non, in my view, non-traditional mindset. It sounds like I'm still old school. Yep. So how do I make that transition? Let's say most of the <clears throat> boomers that are out there are the employers. And let's say they're like me, which is very old school. And I have a way of thinking, and by the way, my personality is probably in concrete, very hard to change. How do I make that change? Well, first thing we do is we use an assessment tool that, that will assess them and ask them questions that will give you answers that you'll never know about them. Hmm. I'm talking about if you work with them for 10 years, you will not know. And I've had employers tell me that, how they want to be talked to, how they want to be addressed, how they want you to care about them before you get into business, how they want you to ask periodically about their families, how they want to see loyalty and longevity recognized publicly. They're hmm. just not widgets. Mm -hmm. We can't push every square hole into a, a round peg. It so you're a round peg into a square hole, excuse you're, me. You're, you're changing a, a bit of a planetary axiom to me because we're talking about 
people and how we're trying to improve our human value of our business by the employees that work for us. That's what it sounds like to me. You're really making us th rethink this. Steve, I truly believe in my own business as well as most of my clients. Take away everything but their key people and they'll survive. Take away their key people and, and, they, and they won't last at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that for myself in particular. My whole business revolves around my people. Mm -hmm. They're the most important thing I have. When I'm looking at this, I like your, your phrase, and this is a phrase that we've been uh, used to in our industry, but this issue about tying people down or handcuffing golden them handcuffs. to our business. And they have to be golden. They just can't be handcuffed. They've got to be in addition to. Mm -hmm. Don't say, here's what I'm going to offer you, but I'm going to take away your raise. Here's what I'm going to offer you, but I'm going to take away your annual bonus. Here's what I'm going to offer you, but I'm going to take away your 401k contribution. No, say, hey, look, you're very important to me. We're here. I want to take the company to here. I need you to help us get here. You do, and there's a reward for you. Mm -hmm. That's so, a golden handcuff. So between the time, whatever that baseline that you've drawn. Which I normally say is 10 years if I'm, if I'm asked. Mm -hmm. So if I'm thinking about a 10-year commitment, and I'm saying there's a good amount of growth, here's our baseline, and then we're going to grow to this after 10 years, then whatever we already have is already static as a benefit. We're going to now add to That's something, right. and they'll, they'll benefit from that appreciation That's or whatever's right. happening. Now, how do employers, are they okay with that? They're very okay with that because they realize that, first of all, Without, and again, we're very definitive mm -hmm. in who we pick to be in a golden, a golden handcuff plan. You're a true keep for lifers, people you cannot do without. They realize without these people, they're never going to get to here, mm -hmm. wherever here is. And, they're, and they also realize they're making so much more money for themselves, they're willing to share a piece of that pie mm -hmm. for the guys that helped them get there. And have you found that employees actually respond to this in a huge positive way? Huge positive way. Huge positive so way. So this is a major issue for both sides of the, this equation, the employer and the employee. Go back to what I said earlier, particularly in an environment where on any given day, 75% of your key people perceive, rightly or wrongly, they've got a better place to go. Hmm. And that's not really not a reality, is it? That, that's, it's, that's Most of the time, I'm just saying. And again, with LinkedIn and social networking, mm -hmm. someone's always looking at their resume without them leaving their desk. Wow. Well, that's all we have for our show today. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker dealer compliance officer. Missed an episode? You can go right out and see any of our past episodes at downtobusiness.ashbrokers.com. And remember, you could be wiser as an Ash Brokerage Advisor. I'm Steve Savant from Insights. We'll see you.